Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 20 of our official series, where we watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. That said, for this recap, I wanted to do something a little bit special for our 20th video and take another step towards how to really improve our drift train skills, but by specifically focusing on how to properly lead them. As always, Discord and server links are in the description. I would highly recommend watching the entire video, but if there are some specific tracks that you want to learn about, timestamps with track names will be in the description and playback bar. Oh, and one last thing, I did recently switch to pure LCS along with a new post-processing filter, so you might see some changes in quality and brightness throughout the video, but I'll continue to tweak it and adjust things so I can make it really look as good as possible for you guys, and of course, myself in VR. So that said, let's get right into it. We start out on Friday on Drift Track by the Old Tree. Uh, I typically refer to it as Old Tree Drift Track just to keep it simple. But I have a little bit of just a kind of a tandem session for our intro. And we're going to be basically doing a format of, at least most of the time, three leads and one chase. And this is why this video is a little bit longer, but I really wanted to give it some time and kind of talk through it. So while we watch this first run, I just kind of want you guys to see what's going on. But I do want to just say something really quick before we talk about any of this. So this is genuinely my opinion. These are going to be my thoughts. There might be some people that disagree with really like what I'm saying, and there might be better ways potentially uh, to take these or, or to go about these different lines. Uh, totally welcome any feedback, but in my experience, uh, this is kind of what works best. And I'll get into all the specific reasons and kind of my thoughts along uh, with it. But I did feel like I needed to say that. I don't want to feel or have anyone feel like, oh, this is what I'm saying. My law or my word is lawed rather. I, I just want to kind of give some thoughts and uh, hopefully, honestly, I just really want to help you guys and continue what we've been seeing on the servers. Just some really amazing drivers, some massive trains. And uh, if we can help anyone out there watching this, uh, that's a big W in my book, okay? Okay. So last thing, now we've seen the uh, A run, let's talk about uh, another run. So I'm in the S15, uh, we switched track, or sorry, cars. So typically what I do here is I take a mid or an inside line. Now, all every line that I'm gonna be taking, and you're gonna see hopefully throughout this video, I'm trying to take lines that are gonna give forward momentum and not have what I call like this accordion fill. So what does that mean? What I've seen is a lot of times, it's really tempting to wanna take every single outside line really heavy but when you do that and this is maybe a kind of an example here you can see a little bit of stacking there but with the line that i took i was able to keep that forward momentum and kind of keep the train engaged and together there if i would have just thrown a bunch of angle or really gone uh super deep into that corner it just really scrubs a lot of the speed and then ends up killing the train i mean ironically it looks like the train had a little bit of turbulence but that's generally my thought here and now I'm going to kind of give you like a play by play on what I'm looking for in these lines and what my kind of visual points here. So a little bit of Manji action right here. You can pretty much run the outside, but right before you transition, go a little bit in the inside there. I was a little bit wider than I would like mid to inside line right there going here, keeping that forward momentum. And then again, not going fully outside, staying more like mid, maybe a little bit inside line here, extending that out, keeping that forward momentum here transitioning and again taking a little bit of the inside line here to the outside trying to again keep that momentum keep that momentum and then all the way inside outside and then a little bit of inside here and then inside again to really continue to forward to uh, carry that forward momentum this part uh you're a little bit shallow but you got to do that um and then i try not to throw too much angle here just keep it moving forward this part i have seen i think you can run it maybe a little bit deeper or definitely you can run it shallower and then this part um, taking a like kind of a mid inside line to this outside area and then this part I'm looking on that left side of the track a little bit of outside maybe midline inside here and then boom we're set up for success that's what I've seen work pretty well for me and uh here, here we're on the chase uh I, and actually just while we're kind of watching um when we look at these chases uh definitely I would say like maybe look at the track camera look at the lead in front of me uh typically i try i tried to I, i'm pretty sure i made sure that there was a bunch of different leads or different people that were on leads so you guys can kind of see like maybe my lines aren't exactly what everyone else is taking are they going to be better are they going to be worse and luckily with the track camera at the top you guys can kind of analyze and see and sometimes though too like uh it really comes down to uh, is everyone taking the same line 
that the lead line is throwing down, uh, so P1 rather, and then also like right, it, we've talked about it before, uh, modifying lines, so is P1 taking a line that P2 isn't matching? Uh, is P3 taking the same line, et cetera, et cetera, if that makes sense. So, uh, we'll, we'll kind of be rolling through these a little bit quick. I'll probably stop to kind of have a general conversation on our chases, uh, that might make the most sense. Anyway, we go over to Shadow Valley. So a lot of you guys have probably driven this track before, uh, whether it's in Assetto or, or other games, actually. This track is pretty straightforward. Now, there's a lot of little unique things that I have found that work best uh, for train scenarios. And again, I'm really just talking about lines for trains. Uh, I, that's my favorite part about drifting. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different lines that actually you could take solo for sure. Um, and even in a tandem and debatably even in like a little trio drift sesh. But yeah, let's uh, wait for this downhill and let's start talking about what I'm looking for in these lines. So here, transition, boom. Now you can take this on a little bit more inside or a little bit outside. I don't think it matters. We're trying to extend our drift, not trying to make too much of an adjustment there. Now here, you don't want to go outside. You want to stay a little bit mid inside line, transition there at that wall. And then we can pretty much just ride this out, this whole outside zone, just kind of carrying speed, no problem. I take it on a little bit of an inside there right before the transition. And then here, a mid uh, line. And then definitely this, I want to call out, don't, really want to go outside of that white line there and then sticking in a little bit on the inside corner to inside corner feels the best again in a train situation here you can run the outside and then you're outside as well i think uh i'm a little shallow i honestly uh i, I was uh trying to switch off of the chaser who which has a really really long uh rear end and uh yeah it's kind of hard for me uh to remember how much prox i do have or not on the on the rear side of the car so let's talk about it again, play by play. So here we're looking for an inside line, keeping that uh, momentum forward, transition, running the outside here, nice and wide. And then you're gonna notice, I'm gonna go in the inside here. So taking the mid, pulling in the inside, and then here you can go basically to the wall if you really wanted to. I think mid line works best, sets you up pretty good. Going a little bit wide here, but if you look, I'm gonna take it on this inside line, pull it into the inside corner there, and then again, inside, maybe midline to an outside. And then we're going back on the outside here on transition. And then we're just trying to maintain that angle. You can see me struggling a little bit, arguably. And then here, what I would also recommend inside transition, kind of aim for that pull outside uh, where your transition point is, and then a mid or an outside line. And again, you can take that inside or outside. I'd probably just fill it out depending on your car and what makes sense to you. So now we are in a chase position. So I actually don't know who we're chasing. Uh, the color makes me feel like it might be Scooby. So we're going to kind of look to see, is he going to be taking the same angle? Um, and actually, I really don't know if that's him. So I could be totally off. Actually, now that my brain, my brain is saying that it's not him. You can see him taking the outside line. So we're going to look at the train, see how it's reacting. Looks like it's no problem, actually, right there. Mid to mid line, I would argue. Train's looking pretty healthy. Transition should be running basically outside and it looks like he is very nice on the lead transition point he's gonna go inside just like we talked about transition here a little bit more of uh it looks like he was gripping up a little bit going a little bit uh more acceleration or uh momentum uh i, I think that's fine you can kind of do it either way though uh anyway yeah so now we go over to uh takamaki a very beloved track of ours for sure one that i genuinely enjoy a lot and i would recommend anyone that's trying to get away from left foot braking uh this was a track that really helped force uh the issue and uh challenge me to just be throttle and clutch but let's talk about the lines now this track i still don't really feel as confident as the last two tracks that we've talked about so far but i'm going to give some insight on what i've been trying to do or at least what i think is going to be the best now, definitely, I would say this is probably a little bit of uh, subjective thoughts, but I'll just give it to you, uh, you know, for what it is. All right, so here, transition, boom. We want to run on the outside, not too much, not too crazy, but right here, outside, no problem. Then look for this inside zone right there, that inside line. Boom, transition out. And then we want a nice, smooth, 
up here really shallow line here set you up with a good amount of speed to go up this hill you shouldn't need the left foot break at all if you hit it right that's actually not a bad line and then here i've seen people go outside i've seen people go inside i'm not too sure on that corner honestly and then this part i've also seen two ways either this way where you go a little bit outside hug the inside or completely outside and then this part too i've been kind of experimenting a little bit more of like a midline inside line arguably it's kind of hard to tell so like those lines are very close in that section and uh really again just think about while we're watching we want forward momentum forward momentum so if i'm hitting forward momentum i'm i'm pretty much happy generally but if i'm not that's where i would say there's a problem so really we want to watch my lines here in first person and then maybe glance up at track cam here and there and see like okay is a train aligned with it is it bunching and then if you see bunching typically that's going to signify that i took an incorrect line and uh, maybe threw too much angle or went a little bit too outside so you can see here more of a mid inside line outside looking for this inside zone right there boom a little bit uh on the midline there and then here i was kind of like working on maybe what it would feel like if i didn't go super outside there it kind of seemed like it worked but uh yeah i'm interested to see what you guys thought but this line here i've noticed a lot of people uh mistake you can see there that p3 was not ready for that line i was able to match the transition timing of our p1 but he was going to take a much different line and i think that the line that uh i took as long as well as the p1 position is the right line it's very very tricky uh but once i think once you get it and you kind of see if you especially if you watch the replays but just in general like if you kind of look at the train health you can kind of analyze uh these lines and and really that's like i always talk about watching the replays rewatching them back very valuable uh to do and then you can kind of see like oh i see my lines and we talked about that a couple series ago uh about line rock right i was able to learn quite a bit uh editing it and rewatching it so here's a very interesting track this is abisu north course you guys probably know this i feel like a lot of people drive this actually now we were actually testing well rather i was trying to improve on this little line right here so basically you're supposed to throw it reverse uh slash like i guess like a backy i'm absolutely terrible at it dude it's really embarrassing saying it but uh at the same time this is what it is man and uh it's a new thing for me so um as we're watching basically i'm just trying to get it into uh angle drift angle and then here um let's really let's actually talk about these because there's a lot of things going on so hopefully i can capture everything so basically i typically like to go inside to inside here then inside to more of an outside now this line is really tricky i feel like people don't really think about it uh the line i just took right there i think is pretty decent but really thinking about that forward momentum in those positions i've seen a lot of bunching up in that uh position but uh i i, I think like really like there's a really cool entry right but there is more of the track everywhere else so trying to get a little bit better keep the train together especially we can throw some crazy angle but here we're on fourth gear actually by the way shift up uh transition and then here i like to pull the e-brake shift down to third a little bit shallow you can take that line actually it's not terrible but i would definitely challenge you to go a little bit more outside if you can either line like i just mentioned does work though um so take that as as you will but here same idea we want to keep forward momentum and again just for transparency i actually do struggle quite a bit on that section that little s area and then here's me attempting yet again to try to do this i'm really trying to figure out where my visual zones are i don't really uh if ever have done like back user uh anything like that so it's, it's like a new skill set for me for sure but again shifting in the fourth getting a little bit of it into initiation there throwing it in transition third gear shift l e brake to third gear shift i should say and that's a lot better looking of a line i'd still say it's uh, a little weak let's just be honest uh and i think actually maybe i included an additional lead clip here uh just to help i'm actually not too sure we'll see but yeah looking at that s turn i think it's an s turn uh trying to keep again forward momentum forward momentum uh if you walk away from this video with anything in a lead we want that forward momentum carry the train forward any backwards or the opposite of forward momentum will cause bunching right so we're trying to avoid that so here third gear into fourth gear get a little bit sideways here looking for the inside spot transition e-brake third gear upshift and running this nice and wide and it also like if you're feeling like it doesn't really make sense or doesn't feel right 
really finicky to get the gearing correct on this track i feel like so at least i feel um that takes a little bit of time to really gear it in because you're going actually through three gears now that i think about it because on this downhill um i don't know if you're gonna see it but uh, i just realized you're not gonna see it here because uh this is actually a different line that you can take by the way if the lobby's interested in it i think it works just as well especially for people like me who are not very uh let's say predictable or confident or able to hit those lines properly but when you go on that downhill and you throw the back yeah i have been shifting in the second so here we're in third we just shifted in the fourth transition i'm really trying to work on keeping that proximity as close as i can and you're going to see e-brake to third shit uh third gear shift up well, a lot of words and then i'm trying just really hard to maintain uh proximity but you can see me pulling a little bit of uh, angle to make that happen so not an expert on that by any means but uh maybe hopefully that's helpful but we switch now over to cg bashlands so i was starting to get uh i got a little bit of feedback that i was pretty trash in the e46 maybe true maybe not i'm not sure so uh i made the official switch over the s15 so uh here we are but yeah, one thing about this track is a lot of these zones are actually decently helpful. Uh, shout out to Scooby, actually. He did mention an area that has helped me if you have grass effects on. Actually, this section right here, you want to kind of put your front tires over that little grass patch that's on top of the track. Uh, and that actually sets you up pretty well. So let's talk about the lines as we go through them. So let's start about here. This is what I'd say is maybe the start. So here trying to run this outside line i'm still pretty terrible at it have this outside zone right there boom trying to hit it a little bit shallow though and then here you really want to aim for this outside zone carry that forward momentum and then transition here a little bit in the midline and if you hit it like right there man i mean that momentum looked really really solid actually and then here i think uh, i would argue you could go a little bit more outside but again going on the inside zone there at the end outside bank by the way to the inside near the fence and then boom tires on the grass to this outside zone here riding it out more on the midline preparing for this outside zone right here a little bit of tap set me off but we get right back into it and then back to another run so again let's talk about it outside zone a little bit deeper that time on my side outside zone here transition and again we're looking for this outside zone plant our tires out there and then here, I guess I kind of go a little bit of an inside scrub and then boom, inside to mid to inside looks okay. And then here a little bit late on the entrance of the outside zone and a little bit early of an exit. I typically look for that inside uh, zone right there, this outside bank. And then boom, again, we're looking for the tires on the grass to set us really well for this outside zone here too. I think that out that grass, the outside zone is a big tip on this. I, I think I've seen a lot of people struggle on that actually, so. Uh, hopefully that helps outside transition and i think transition to inside to outside by the way i should mention that better on the outside zone there too outside zone that we're looking for which it looks like we hit it transition and again carrying that forward momentum we're looking for that transition and a lot of these uh angles are a little bit more shallow because we do again want to keep uh that momentum forward there you see a little bit of bunching i'm not too sure if it was my lead or p2 and then looking for this inside to carry momentum to this outside kind of look for this fence inside corner to inside corner with the grass i made a little bit of a mistake outside zone here and then inside zone where those grass pieces are transition to the outside and then uh i guess outside the inside is what i would say into this section right there and then we should be transitioning now to a chase position yep there it is so we're gonna kind of see we have it looks like scooby actually in the lead he is uh very well versed in this track so uh we want to see like do my lines match do they look the same that part looking really smooth especially from my view on p2 kind of similar to what i was saying there a little bit late on entry early on exit now you'll notice he didn't go inside he went a little bit more on outside outside bank a lot more aggressive than i was into the uh tires onto the grass outside zone hit no problem then right there inside where that grass is the outside so kind of close actually i would say pretty close it looks like we just have a couple different lines that we're taking but not that they're not uh they, they, they don't work together uh again it's just a little bit different right 
So now we switch back, or sorry, we switched to Saturday, uh, which then in Saturday we started on Shadow Valley. Not a bad warm-up track for sure. Uh, because we already saw this and I knew this video might have been a little bit long, I just included a couple chase uh, footages for us to just kind of chill and enjoy. And then also, I'm going to drink some water really quick. One sec. But yeah, we just kind of want to look at uh, P1, P2, people in front of us. See what their lines look like. Do they match what I was saying? Are they different? We're going to look. Scooby going the inside. Then you're going midline, midline to this outside zone slash midline as well. So you can see a little bit of difference. Same carrying momentum. It actually carries that pretty well. Taking a little bit of a shallower line to uh, be able to run that. And then we're back at it on a different run in P4. And we're just going to kind of watch and see, are their lines the same? If you're seeing a little bit of lag. I don't think that's you, by the way. I think it's actually from uh, this track. It's a little bit of heavy on resources inside line there. Looking for that inside to midline. And then we have an outside zone full, I think. A little bit of wall tap, recovers, nice. Uh, a little bit more of a tap, recovers. And then we're gonna look. Now you can see P1 going outside to a an midline to an outside. It's been interesting. See a lot of different ways to take it for sure. Uh, but now we switch over to Lime Rock. Now, the fact that I am in a chase starting out is very interesting i'm not really sure why i edited it that way but here we are so let's talk about it last time we uh did talk about this next upcoming section where we have this outside zone all the way to outside zone and not pulling it in too hard but now you can see right there making a little bit of correction and going a lot more shallow and that's actually not the line i would like to take uh but it is the line that P1 and P2 did seem to take, so I was following them through that. I'm tripping out a little bit that this isn't a lead run, but... Uh, oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, sorry. A little bit late of a recording session for me. Uh, my apologies. But yeah, this track is just very small, man. So, like, I did have a couple leads here and there, but it was like a lead into a chase. It's just, we I, And honestly, like, shout out to you guys. I mean, I, I think we actually sacked the server uh, full 32 this weekend, or this last weekend, so... Um, but yeah, this was just kind of hard to just have like a pure chase. So I just figured out, Hey man, I'll show you guys a couple like decent looking trains. So, uh, let's look at this next run though. I don't, this, this edit doesn't really look super familiar to me. So I'm not sure if there was anything specific in there I wanted to cover, but here we are in P2. We're going to be watching the chaser. So now typically what I like to do is inside line, just like he did inside line right there carry this out and now i see a lot of people throw way too much angle right here and not carry that momentum you can see the chaser doing a good job on a mid line which is not bad to the inside line right there which is great into mid line i think you could go a little bit more on the outside if you wanted to i think it's a little bit conservative but it definitely still very chaseable then here we want to carry outside and we want to go outside where that little gray strip as you can see him doing my same mistake that i was uh, calling myself out for uh, which you could see then the train had to eat a little bit of that a little bit of turbulence But it's all good. Everyone was able to stick with it, but you can see like especially in P1 um, and again like P2 P3 all the way till the rear uh, You're gonna be basically a lead and chase at the same time. So Really my job here in P2. I just want to make sure that I'm being stable get a little bit of proximity for P1 to run his line and then uh, also maybe a little bit of a pocket proximity pocket uh, just to make sure if there's any issues that the train stays stabilized, which it looks okay so far. So we're going to be hoping that we're going to hit this outside zone, but we're going to assume we're going to go for this mid. And there you can see it kind of works, but the train does have to be expecting it. And I think most people are going to be expecting that outside zone. And it also helps a little bit uh, for the train to kind of re recoup and make a little bit of mistakes without too much of a punishment. At least that's my opinion. But now we switch over to Sunrise Circuit. Now, this is a track that uh, genuinely I've struggled on quite a bit. Uh, I still feel like I'm trying to learn it, still trying to perfect it. Uh, but let me give you a little bit of my thoughts here. So outside line, a little bit too far outside for sure. I'm still trying to figure out my visual point for entry and if I should e-brake. Uh, I think for most of it, I was e-braking. Then here's the interesting part. Inside to inside, don't go too crazy on the angle. To inside seems to set you up the best. Now I see myself included. 
I was losing a lot of proximity to people because they were taking an inside to inside line and I was taking like a, the same line but throwing a little bit too much angle and losing people super quick um, especially quick drivers like turbo it was just punishing every time in that corner and then here we're trying to extend the angle or sorry to extend the drift as far as we can uh, I'll call it out on our next uh, line there but here again kind of same idea outside of that part right before it cuts into the dirt outside you can kind of take this midline too if you wanted to actually uh, we're sucking it in on the inside line to inside line here and then back to inside and then here we're going to be running a outside ideally it's not a big deal to run it outside here and then boom transition let me talk about this next part here so inside line is typically what i found that works best for me inside to this outside really push the track limits here back to the inside to the outside to the inside that typically works the best try to get to the tire wall if you can i'm terrified of it because the chaser had such a long rear end so i was super far away and then here again trying to adapt a little bit make sure i'm not tapping anyone i wasn't sure what's happening but we want to look for an inside to inside which is not looking too bad to another inside and then again outside looks like i'm going inside just trying to catch up a little bit but again this is uh well i was gonna say you want to be a little bit uh less aggressive about that catch up but it looks like it was pretty aggressive so inside to the outside of the track limits here to the inside corner to the outside to the inside corner extend if you can out to the tire wall transition about there i think and again you can see me struggling <laughs> quite a bit kind of embarrassing but i mean this is the reality bro and uh inside to inside is what we're looking for you can see there right there i went a little bit to mid slash outside and i lost all of my proximity and that's actually one of my biggest mistakes on this track uh and maybe some of you out of you maybe some of you out there watching that's also an issue and that might be why by the way so think about that next time you go on sunrise circuit but we are now on cg final bout the number two um, I, I feel like I've got the track cams working one time and then they don't really want to seem to cooperate with me. We have a version of it, but it's just not a very, uh, cool looking version of it. But yeah, this track again is still a track I'm trying to learn, but I'm going to try to give you some thoughts that I have <clears throat> and that maybe it might help you guys out there that could be struggling with this track. I think this is again, just like Sequoia Park, uh, another example of a track that can be very fun, uh, but can also be very punishing, uh, depending if you're taking the right lines or not. So let's start about here. So here, what I've been doing, I'm in third, shift up to, to fourth, excuse me. Hit this inside if I can. Really, it does matter because the inside will set you up really well for this outside zone. Zone markers are going to be very helpful here for you here. Then pull that into the inside. Transition another inside zone uh, coming up. Then outside, boom. To outside, boom boom i'm trying to get a little bit better about being a little bit more aggressive into that uh outside zone transition and then i've been trying this like inside to kind of inside so inside to mid outer to inside and then outside here of course um to an inside and basically like you really want to aim for these specific zones this doesn't have a zone necessarily but you're basically trying to set yourself up hit that outside area boom and then we're looking for uh, transition upshift. You can see I'm still struggling a little bit with that part, killing everyone behind me, it looks like. And then we want to set ourselves up for the outside zone. <laughs> it's really bad, sorry. Uh, and the inside zone is just a little bit uh, poor line. I think this is the, uh, I don't know. I don't want to blame it like warming up or anything, but yeah, I was uh, definitely on a struggle bus. Hopefully I was working on the gear ratios, but then outside the line, transition inside and then this is what i was saying inside to like a mid outside to an inside uh to an outside and when i say outside i'm saying outside zone uh when i'm saying inside typically boom that's an inside uh as an example and then here i'd be like oh i'm on the outside uh and when i say like lines i basically am visualizing the inside of a corner uh there's a line the middle of the corner there's a line so right now we're on the midline uh arguably right mid in the middle of the track and then this would be considered an outside as the inside of the track is on our left side. If that's helpful, by the way, I, I, I probably should have said that earlier, but hopefully it is, hopefully it's making sense as I'm explaining it. But yeah, so inside we're on a chase. 
outside here. We're just trying to keep that proximity. We're really trying to make sure that we're transitioning when our P1 is transitioning to. Transition. Trying to stay close. Taking a little bit of a different line than I am, and I'm not going to say I'm an expert on this track, so maybe that is the right call. There, you can see me trying to really push and be more aggressive on that outside. A little bit too aggressive. Shout out to the drivers for putting up with me and uh, getting re-engaged on the train. And again, trying to keep as much proximity as I can uh, into the upshift here. I think the upshift part is really important uh, for those of you that are struggling. You don't want to be in just one gear here. You definitely need to shift. So here's another really uh, interesting track you guys have actually maybe never seen. This is Higashi Fuji. I think I'm uh, saying it correctly. Now, I hadn't driven this for quite a while, and when I did last time, I was garbage. Not that I've changed too much, but I do feel a lot more confident in these lines. Let me tell you about a couple tricks that I found, um, and I've actually become very fond of this track in a very short amount of time. But yeah, so here we're just trying to stay on the outside into this inside line, inside line, and then right here you're going to see a little bit of a divot. Boom, you see the cut, like a tire drop almost. That's going to set you up pretty well. Run this. You want to stay inside these white lines that you see, and then... One thing I've been seeing, uh, we're going to get to it on our next run. Um, I I'm just going to wait. We're going to talk about it later. And then here, we want to stay in this white line. And then typically, I'm aiming for this white line inside inside uh, area. Do like a midline. And then here, I'm just really trying to extend the drift out. Running a little bit outside the white line. Set me up pretty decent for this outside zone here. And then pull the line into the inside. And then again, right here, you're going to see a little bit of a tire drop boom hopefully kind of and then running that uh white line staying kind of on it and then pulling right here that's the biggest thing i see people going a little bit too far out inside to an outside line here the lines are very tight though by the way so it's kind of like a little bit of the same transition and then boom running that white line seems to set up really well for this part transition a little bit outside i have a little bit of track going outside the white lines there Running the outside line here. Looking for the inside line here. Boom. Inside corner. Boom. And then again, we're looking for the tire drop right there. Good. And then that sets me up really well to run this white line. I'm looking at the white line. And then boom. Look at the wall. Try to run the wall. Try to run the wall. Otherwise, you're going to go too far out. Transition. Staying in the white lines. Going to inside to outside. A little bit outside, but I think it's okay. It's not a big deal. There's a little bit more track there. Transition. And again, boom. We're looking for that white line. You can see almost like literally i'm like super focused on that white line um at least it's obvious for me watching and then you don't have to run the white line for that part you kind of want to use the track limits there and then again we're looking for the inside to inside a little bit of tire drop here and then a little bit too much actually <laughs> and then uh, you can run the white line and then boom pull it in pull it in pull it in to that wall there inside or you can, you can even take that midline there not too bad inside you could even run it the whole entire time and there there's a like these lines are so close you can really um you know utilize different lines to to execute properly and the biggest thing i would say here is you want to carry momentum not make any sudden changes you can see we're taking a lot different of a line but still generally being smooth and again boom inside to inside to this outside part and then we want to try to stay on the left side a little bit too, I would say, uh, on the inside there. And again, run the wall, run the wall, run the wall, run the wall. And you can see a little bit of faltering there um, in front of us just because they ran a little bit too wide. But I think over time and just a little bit of practice, thinking about those lines will be good. Transition. Again, I'm looking at that white line. I'm actually probably looking at the cars a little bit more. And then this part, again, I just want to keep stressing. You really want to use the track as much as you can here and really run the track limits rather than the white line, I think, for this section. And they'll set you up pretty nice. You can see outside line too much of a, on, I think, the P1 a little bit, and it kind of slowed down the train and we bunched up. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> so now we move over to clutch kickers. Now, I know a lot of you guys have driven this track before. I totally get it. I think there's still a lot of improvement uh, for me specifically, but for a lot of you guys out there that have driven this track a lot, especially when you're in these uh, maybe like with a lot higher, um, with really good drivers, let's just put it that way, with really good drivers. And when we're talking about trains, you're going to have a lot different of an experience than you are uh, in a public lobby, just kind of throwing lines around and just seeing what happens, right? So let's talk about my thoughts. Again, always willing to be wrong, but here's kind of what I'm thinking as I'm taking this. So here, going a little bit outside, a little bit towards the outside, 
boom outside and we really want to kind of run this outside there's no issue in doing that now right here you want to pull in a little bit towards that cone and then right here i think that's a little bit too shallow on my side but if you hit that properly and hopefully there's a clip of that in here i'll set you up really nice running outside pull it in a little bit on the inside you can run this outside and don't do don't go too crazy pull out a little bit early and then transition right about there I'll set you up really nice you can take this on a mid or a very out outside line here and then boom outside the outside and again we can run this outside line pretty decent now we want to pull into where that cone is a little bit and run a midline and i would say that's still too shallow of a line right there we want to go like midline there i think I, I think that's where a lot of people are kind of tripping up on themselves they're going like outside line outside line outside line and it looks cool uh but when you're talking about like five drivers at once uh in a train it just is not cohesive for the train to be able to follow i think at, at least from what i've seen and especially followed when people do that it's just really really tough especially if you're like p3 p4 it's really hard to follow so we want to pull it in a little bit better there and then here not bad not bad not bad i don't think that was a bad line at all you can see a little bit of contact i wasn't watching the track camera to be honest but uh probably wasn't prepared for that line here again running the outside pulling out a little bit early setting us up pretty well on that transition boom right here for the outside so now we're gonna see i actually don't even know who is in p1 right now but we're gonna see what their lines look like and what the effects are either positive or negative so boom goes pretty wide i'm going a little bit more shallow than him he goes really wide and you can see there boom instantly he like it crunched up a little bit right there's a little bit of a proxim pocket proximity so not a too big of an issue but um maybe we'll see i think i have a couple additional runs just because this is a very short track um here again i think a little bit too much on the outside uh but recovering pretty nicely and you probably want to right now look between the track cam and my per uh first person maybe even just the uh track camera actually you could probably see the train health a little bit better so here trying to match his angle a lot better look at that instantly that line is fantastic man what a change and that sets you up really nice and you can see the train health is looking very healthy no real contact here a little bit weird on that out and you can see if you could see there if, on the track camera you might even want to go back you can see a little bit of the domino effect right that happened back there but anyway transition and we're going to look for it again and i think i remember actually talking to them in voice chat while we were or proximity chat yeah pull it in a little bit a little bit too aggressive on a pull in maybe but really decent line right there boom set you up really nice and if you're having issues with that last corner it's probably because you're not setting yourself up right there um and then here i think yeah that's not bad that's not bad yeah that's crazy that's crazy yeah it really cleaned up near the end uh now we switch over to rhythm and flow another track that we've driven a decent amount but i think that there's a lot of good tips that maybe i can give this is still a track i feel like i'm improving a little bit but uh i can give you some of my thoughts so why don't we just talk about it now so here i typically go more of a mid inside line to an inside line a little bit of a midline i don't completely go on the outside there and i'm really trying to carry forward momentum right here's an important part inside line a little bit on that left side outside and then transition and then boom i typically run more of like a mid or even arguably an inside line looking for that inside line there transition you can run the wall here if you want to if you're feeling super confident also sorry for my head bobbing i guess i was listening to something really nice transition here trying to keep that forward momentum looking for that inside corner and then here i've been going a little bit outside the track limits right there uh, almost maybe right on it actually and then transition and you really want to throw the weight of the car and kind of trust it. you can actually see that line i didn't trust as much as i could but let's talk about it again just kind of re hit it home so looking for an inside line typically i think for me inside line again to a midline not trying to run that wall and, and really an inside to inside arguably and to another inside here to an outside to the outside line transition and i'm looking for that mid to pull it in so like starting mid going for the inside transition inside to the outside we're running like maybe kind of a midline actually um no it's kind of outside then transition here and i'm looking for the inside 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 boom pulling it in on the inside setting us up really nicely for this little hill a little bit of extra space out there i think that was a little bit too much honestly and then boom transition and you kind of really want to run if you can this whole outside zone i do pop out a little bit early to set myself up 
pretty nicely for this uh this line here that i take on the inside so now we switch over to a chase position so we're going to kind of look at that uh that p1 in front of us and see what their lines look like better or worse not a judgment on the driver just learning the lines and seeing what makes sense and maybe if my lines or are good or bad could be both also i'm not sure if this is happening as i'm recording this or if the export will fix it, it looks like it's lagging a little bit i think it actually i, I think actually it was my computer when i was uh streaming I, I figured out what the issue was but uh yeah my bad if it's stuttering a little bit it's not you guys it's uh actually me so transition we're looking to run the outside line not looking too bad there on p1 and then personally i'm looking for the inside you can see yeah maybe like a midline not bad and then it looks like it takes an outside oh man i wish i wish i would have done another one sorry guys but now we switch over to a track that has grown on me in a very big way sim suto cart i think is how you said um this is a great track uh learning line choices there's so much space to work with and i think that as you start driving it the lines kind of become self-evident if you're really thinking about it and i've noticed my line choices are much different than other people's so I'm just going to say with a grain of salt, here's what I've been thinking. Here's what has been working for me. And this doesn't mean that this will be what I think the lines are forever in the future. This is what is just working for me for now and what I think makes the most sense. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it on this next run here. So basically inside to this outside. Now you really, I just like to not straighten. So I want to stay in drift, keeping it really shallow, going to this outside going towards the wall transition here and i really have been trying to fill this outside zone not looking too bad transition right where that grass is and then here like dude basically you just kind of want to chuck it in man kind of want to just chuck it in i think i was a little bit uh, timid right there run this outside wall a little bit go midline back to outside and then this is what i may maybe just thought was kind of fun but uh then transition kind of put your nose right near that wall set so she's kind of decently up for this outside area here I end up taking a midline. I think I go a little bit more outer. I'm not sure. Uh, but then here, transition inside line. I think you could go outside, though, arguably for sure. And then boom, running an outside and then pulling it in a little bit. And then back to the inside line. And again, I think you could probably go a little bit further out there. Inside to an outside, looking at the wall, keeping in the drift. Transition going towards the wall. Then boom, we want to transition out. We want to run the entire outside for the most part. Not too bad. Transition. I think I could have pulled out a little bit early. Big throw. It's very satisfying when you hit it right. But again, I want to carry that forward momentum. Transition from mid to outside. We're on the outside. Oh, a little bit of mid, maybe arguably inside here. And then again, I like to transition. Keep the nose really close to the wall. Then pull to the outside here. And then uh, it's just kind of hard to see the track sometimes right there. So I go like mid or inside and then to another inside. And again, I think you could probably go more outside on this section. I think I was just, uh, just it just felt the best for me, I think. Then mid, pulling it a little bit. Yeah, I'd say mostly mid to inside. And then boom, again to inside, pushing it to the outside a little bit. And then keeping in the drift outside towards the wall and then transition and then again trying to fill out that outside zone i think i added an additional clip just because uh, i thought this track would be really helpful for people to see boom you can see a big throw looks pretty gangster actually on the track cam yeah, it's pretty cool and then uh outside wall mid line outside zone slash the line mid i would maybe say is where it's at right there and then transitioning my nose right at the wall i don't know it's kind of just satisfying I, I mean it's probably just me being extra but I feel like i said you're pretty nice for this area going on the inside and then again i'm looking for that inside zone slash line which i'd say a little bit more mid there actually um and i and i was really like throughout every run i was trying a couple different corners a little bit differently here and there so i was actually genuinely trying to what i call like fishing for lines right like you're just kind of you're doing what you need to but you're kind of doing a couple modifications and honestly i mean it's not a bad idea like every lap just kind of uh test it out see what makes sense but here i wanted to include a run from turbo i think it's just one pretty sure that's turbo 
Uh, you'll see his lines are much different than mine, I believe. And uh, I'm actually, you know, he has a lot more experience on this track. Uh, definitely a lot more season of a driver than I am. So we're just going to kind of watch and see like what he's doing similarly or different. You could see a little bit less aggressive on that wall, nose to wall. Mm, very big outside zone that I did not take at all. So there's uh, me, unfortunately, modifying his line. Then you can see kind of the same line a little bit more on the outside. And again, I, I'm not even saying it a bad way. I'm just saying those are it. I just stayed in the facts, I guess. And then boom, outside doesn't seem too bad. I'm making a little bit of mistakes. So it seems like I'm a little bit more aggressive on the inside than he is on this track. So yeah, hopefully we drive this a little bit more and then, uh, you know, I can make up a couple of different lines that I think are going to work better. But that now brings us to Euphoria Hillside. Now, there are so many lines on this, man. Uh, I think I added quite a few runs, I want to say. But again, like my biggest thing, like I know I've said it a billion times in this video, but really we want to continue to think about forward momentum, forward momentum, how it's very easy. I think on this track too, to just try to be a gangster and throw and go into every single corner possible. My brain kind of want to wants to argue against what I'm saying, but I really do feel like the forward momentum makes sense. Like, I guess I'm just kind of thinking to myself, like, is it possible to throw like really crazy angle and go super deep on these corners and still have a train? I mean, I feel like it's possible, man. I, but I, it just, it, it's just not how it works typically, dude. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, bro. Like for, for real, like if, if you're watching it still at this point, man, uh, and if you have the opinion, let me know. Like, I, I feel like it is possible, but like, it's just very rare. I don't know. You, you'd have to have like some really high collar pull drive. Anyways. Uh, I'm getting lost in the sauce. Um, honestly, a little bit low-key because I feel like we have a lot of time. <laughs> I just wanted to show like a full run uh, before we just really specifically talked about uh, the lines here. So you guys can kind of get a feel for what the track looks like. And there's a lot too. Like when I first took this track on, I'll, ju I'll just mention this. Like it's really hard to memorize lines and I'm unfortunately have either a good or a bad skill set where I have to just like practice 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 and get it down and i remember taking this line or sorry this track on for the first couple like sessions and uh yeah it was just like i couldn't i couldn't remember which corner was where and it was just hard to like remember uh each corner so basically i wasn't setting myself up for uh the corner to come right so it was a little bit of a struggle but i think after a while forced myself back to back to back got a little bit stronger in it <clears throat> But yeah, let's talk about the lines. And now that we've seen a full lap. So here, basically, you kind of low-key can just chuck it in, run this full outside. Uh, you can see me there taking actually a little bit of a midline, but that's okay. And then here's kind of like a little bit of low-key Manji inside to inside. I, I feel like makes the most sense. Here to outside, pull it to the inside. And this is just my opinion. To transition to inside here again, a little bit late there on my part. To inside to inside run the outside here oh that's a little rough that's a little bit rough but inside transition and then i've been i was talking to scooby too a little bit of e-brake here is not too bad of an idea i then pull a lot of my uh it did not go in the corner as much as i could have there uh but here you could uh, you pull a little bit e-brake i think you can run the full outside on this part though no problem and basically that inside spot and here I've been messing with like outside. The inside feels the best, but I don't think that you have to take that inside. Now this part is interesting. So inside to outside, uh, I'm actually, it looks like I might be trying to catch up to someone actually. And then here inside, I'm trying to carry that forward momentum. Again, forward momentum, forward momentum. Here I'm making a mistake, but I should be inside to inside, to inside, to inside, to outside. Uh, you could probably, I'd actually argue outside to outside here on this section. Um, I really think I was just trying to catch up. I'm not sure why I included this, my bad. Um, but then inside to inside and then here, like kind of like a crest shape. I feel like it, like just keep that forward momentum. You, it's really tempting to go fully outside, uh, but you want to kind of go, I think inside to mid to outside. It kind of sets you up pretty well. And then this part too, right? Inside to this 
inside and then it's inside if you shallow a little bit not like this but like what you're seeing in front of me that line's pretty nice then you can go outside to this inside this is not an example of a good run so uh, my apologies not even a great not even a good line actually uh this is me <laughs> looking back and seeing that no one's behind me and just trying to be a fiend and catch up so uh that's rough but anyways let's see another run so okay we're actually in a chase now uh fair enough so we're gonna see what uh our p1 driver is gonna do so here inside to inside to midline inside maybe not as aggressive as an outside to the outer area to inside while wow, making quite a few mistakes inside to inside and running this outside zone here and we want to see an inside a little bit of a hiccup i think there's a mistake that's about to come up but i mean we've seen look pretty nasty so far so it's fine no actually not and then here i did not take the right line but p1 did for sure and then outside line yeah his line is actually looking pretty good there but this inside is where i'm aiming and then let's see what he does here so normally i go inside looks like he's going mid a little bit of pull into inside it looks actually really nice to inside and then he should be pulling out on the outside but you can see he comes in right there on the inside that's good and then here i think he does a little bit different than me no it looks about the same inside we're kind of looking for that mid inside mm. i almost think that my gearing was not correct actually rewatching this a little bit uh but outside and then it should be a full outside here carry that momentum as much as you can you don't even really have to pull super hard in to the inside you should be able to pull momentum forward uh, a little bit of a tap transition and then the crest inside to outside and then here i think it's personally i think it's inside yeah like inside midline then i think this is midline to inside but i see a lot of people to get outside and i think you lose a lot of momentum you see a little bit of the train struggling but i don't know if that's because of me or not and then inside to this out this line is good this line is good this line is good and then i think you can basically do outside yeah that's a good line on p1 and then outside is pretty good and then it's pulling to the inside right there transition you can kind of run the outsides or midlines on this part though too actually and then i guess i have another chase okay interesting i guess i did not have that many good lead runs that's hilarious the irony uh it wouldn't be one of my videos without uh, some irony in there so it was inside we're looking at the inside line again and uh, maybe this run i would say if you, you guys that are still locked in maybe look at the track cam a little bit see uh what the train health is looking like i think that uh, this is the run where there was a mistake that i made that was pretty egregious uh outside of all the other bad mistakes that i made actually no okay maybe i'm just tripping my bad but yeah outside looking good you can see he's taking like a mid to outside line not bad trains looking pretty nice actually too inside art ish i guess arguably and then here he's taking more of an inside line train kind of didn't like that actually which is surprising to me outside to okay there's a different line that i would normally take but the train looks like it's handling no problem outside of all my mistakes yeah i think there's a gearing issue here for sure sorry i'm getting i'm i'm just like re yeah that's that's the <laughs> greatest mistake one of many dude yeah yeah i think the gearing is a little bit too short maybe anyway i'm sorry 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 uh, it's just it's a little frustrating it's like rewatching it i'm like oh, okay and, and this is like what i was saying before i mean i think the replays are really important to kind of learn and uh watch things back so here taking a pretty good midline you can see me making so many mistakes uh it's kind of embarrassing rewatching this i'm not gonna lie dude not gonna lie but hey dude honestly at the same time like i think it's good um you know we're not all i mean none of us except for uh dean is a machine right so i think it's reasonable that we uh adjust and uh you know this is kind of how these sessions go man sometimes we have really good runs and sometimes i just you know sit in p2 and throw no big deal but i mean the point is we want to try to keep the train cohesive right we want that forward momentum try to uh match p1 as much as we can and it's all gucci and we keep it all together 
But yeah, man, if you can believe it, dude, I mean, I know this video was super long, but uh, other than if, uh, Euphoria Hillside, if I didn't mention that this is the track, uh, kind of flew by and then <laughs> I started watching me make every mistake known to man and uh, yeah, I slowed down a little bit. But hey, bro, like uh, seriously, if, if you're still here, man, sincerely, I do appreciate you guys watching. Um, I really hope this was helpful, man. And uh, I hope some of these lines maybe give you a different perspective. I do also want to say again, sometimes my liners are going to change as I learn, as I grow, as I evolve. Um, my opinions might change. So um, now that we've hit the 20th video, I'm going to be redoing our two cha or two leads, two chase uh, format for every track moving forward, even if we've seen it, uh, just to make sure that we're keeping it fresh and revisiting old lines that we've seen. But other than that, guys, man, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, apologies for the long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, though. We'll continue to work on our little uh, pure filters, make it nice as possible. A lot of room for improvement. As always, it's an iterative process, and we'll just continue to get better. Hope you guys had a great week. And more importantly, I hope I will catch you guys on track this weekend. Thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time. Peace.